Welcome, friends, to Hampton Court Palace. When Henry VIII was King of England, Hampton Court was one of over 50 palaces that he owned. And now, after 500 years, parts of his palace still remain. And when you visit, you can walk through the rooms that Henry walked through. Before we go any further, allow me to introduce myself. I am Master John. I am dressed as one of King Henry's Yeomen of the Guard. What do you think of my uniform? Pretty impressive. Rather strange shaped shoes, hose, and codpiece, of course. I have uh, a skirted jacket with gold and velvet. But best of all, I get to carry a sword. But don't ask me to draw it. If you pulled a weapon out within 12 miles of King Henry, you could have your hand chopped off. We only have a short time together here today, so we must make haste if I'm going to show you all of the things you can see at the palace. This is the main entrance to Hampton Court Palace. In Henry's day, the king would arrive by boat on the Thames. He'd come to a water gate that no longer exists, but visitors by land, they'd come here. And when you come, look out for these animals. They're called the King's Beasts. There's a lion, there's a dragon, there's a greyhound. Maybe, before you visit, you could do some research at school. Work out why these animals were important to King Henry VIII. Follow me into base court. <gasps> My friend, don't run! The ground here is very uneven and you must always stay close to your adult. Now, where was I? Ah, base court. Base means low and this courtyard and these rooms are where less important visitors to King Henry's court would be allowed to stay. Before you leave, be sure to look out for chimneys all around the courtyard. Follow me. This is Clock Court named after the amazing astronomical clock. It's a 24-hour clock with Roman numerals, but it also has the signs of the zodiac, the phases of the moon, and it tells you when high tide is, which is very useful for King Henry when he wants to get back to London on the river. Henry was fascinated with science and astronomy, and maybe before your visit, you can work out why it is that on this clock the sun goes round the earth and not the other way round. Now we have to go upstairs to get to Henry's public rooms. He thought he was more important than everyone else, so higher. Come on into the Great Hall. Isn't this a beautiful room? In Henry's day, there could be hundreds of people in this room. On the day of your visit, it might be quite busy as well. So remember, be patient, stay close to your adult, and don't make too much noise. Also, remember to keep looking around, because there's so much to see here at Hampton Court Palace. And if you don't look, you might miss something. Like these eavesdroppers. What do you think they are? I think they're there to remind visitors to the court not to gossip and say bad things because somebody might be listening. When you come on your visit to the palace, make sure you spend lots of time exploring in here. Make sure you look carefully at the windows, the tapestries, the ceiling, and the tablecloths. Imagine all the different colors, smells, and sounds that would have been here in Henry's day. And guess what? If you'd worked at Hampton Court for the king, you'd probably sleep in here as well. Now, can you imagine that? The tapestries in here are fantastic. Henry VIII spent the equivalent of hundreds of thousands of pounds, and it's amazing that after 500 years, they're still here. It's also amazing that they're still hanging in the room they were specially made for. So it's very important. We don't eat food near them, and uh, don't touch them because they're very precious. In fact, we're not allowed to eat and drink anywhere inside Hampton Court Palace. Let's go into the next space. We can either go through here and see the original Tudor staircase that leads down to the kitchens, or we can do what the nobles did, go up this step.
This room is the Great Watching Chamber. It's called the Great Watching Chamber because the yeomen of the God, men like me, used to stand guard and watch over the king. Imagine them stood around the room in their fine uniforms with their swords and other weapons, standing for hours on end. I wonder where they went to the loo. Maybe when you visit, you can find out. In the Great Watching Chamber, look out for Jane Seymour's crest, the fleur de lis, the portcullis and a Tudor rose. Maybe at school you could find out the importance of these symbols before your visit. Behind this door lay Henry's private rooms, like his bedroom, his bathroom, his dressing room. You could only go through there if you were invited by the king. Today, the only thing on the other side of this door is a brick wall. Later kings and queens changed these rooms completely. The last space we're going to explore is the processional route, although some people call it the haunted gallery. It's supposed to be haunted by the ghost of Catherine Howard. The king would process along here on his way to the council chamber or the chapel. Imagine him surrounded by all of his yeomen. My friends, this is where I must leave you. But look out for me when you come to visit, and all the other courtiers, and especially the king. And when you meet them, remember to be respectful. Maybe bow and curtsy, and possibly don't get in their way if they seem really busy. I've only been able to show you a small portion of King Henry's palace. So when you come, look out for all the other things to see. Uh, the young Henry story, the council chamber, the kitchens, and the chapel courtyard. And then, remember, that after King Henry, there are all sorts of other kings and queens who made lots of changes to the palace. So when you've finished exploring the Tudor areas, there's a whole other palace to explore. I'm sure that when you come, you'll have a wonderful day. If you do have any questions, be sure to ask all of the warders that you see. They'll be happy to answer anything that you, any questions that you have. As for me, I must really now go and attend upon the king. So enjoy your day when you come here.